So now before we move to other uh, segments of our business um, model, uh, let um, generally speak about um, the rest of the segment in business model compass. So in this part, um, we will talk about uh, the key resources um, because um, this is very important part of um, uh, business model creation. And um, uh, we should also, you should also uh, think about physical, financial, human, intellectual uh, key resources that the company should um, need. So um, uh, as for the physical resources, for example, uh, we should focus on the company um, uh, company's physical assets, such as, for example, uh, manufacturing uh, facilities, warehouses, equipment, vehicles, or, for example, raw material. As for the financial resources, um, uh, we should focus on financial assets, such as cash, credit lines, or investment capital. Um, thinking about human resources, um, of course, we have in mind uh, companies' personnel, their skills, knowledge, experience. Uh, we can also uh, include the company's organizational culture or uh, values. If we think about intellectual resources, um, uh, this will also include uh, the company's um, intellectual property, such as patent, copyrights, trademarks. Uh, trade secrets, as well as any uh, specialized knowledge or um, expertise that the company has developed. Um, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, element of business models or resources is also very important to the company, but uh, the next one, for example, the key activities are also um, uh, the section that um, refers to the core processes and functions that the business must perform in order to create value for its customers and achieve its strategic, strategic goals. Uh, so, for example, key activities can uh, vary widely depending on the nature of the business. But, um, for example, some common uh, examples include um, production, for example, that involves the creation of products or services, including designing, prototyping, or manufacturing, or even testing. It can also um, uh, it can also uh, include market sales, um, uh, which concentrates um, on the activities relating related to promoting and selling the products or services. Um, such as advertising, branding, uh, public relations, sales, uh, outreach, or even uh, customer acquisition. Uh, we should also uh, focus on customer service, which involves uh, providing post sale support to customers, uh, such as, for example, answering questions, resolving issues, handling complaints, or um, research and development, uh, which involves the development of new products, technologies, processes that can improve the business uh, competitive advantage in the market. Uh, we can also um, think about uh, operations that include managing day to day operations of the business, such as uh, logistics, supply, main, uh, supply chain management, inventory control. Um, we can also think about partnerships and um, alliances, uh, which involves um, forming strategic partnerships and alliances with other companies, suppliers, or organizations um, to improve efficiency and the reach for access to new markets. Um, so, well, uh, talking about uh, activities. Um, um, we should remember about um, uh, the effective key activities management because it is um, critical to ensure that the business operates um, efficiently, creates value for the customers, and achieves um, strategic objectives. Um, so, yeah, we are going to talk about uh, this later. And of course, we should remember about key partners. And uh, these uh, sections that we are going to talk 
refers to the external stakeholders that a business relies on to create value and achieve its strategy goals. Um, so key partners can be individual organizations or other businesses that provide resources, expertise, or other critical support to the company. Um, for example, we can think about suppliers and distributors, um, strategic alliances, joint ventures, co-creators. We are identifying and um, managing, um, for example, strong partnerships is very essential for the success of business um, because um, uh, successful partnerships can help a company to reduce um, costs. Uh, improve um, effectiveness, um, access to the markets, or gain a competitive advantage. So by working um, collaboratively with key partners, the company can create a more sustainable business model and achieve its strategic objectives more effectively. And the last piece of um, business model canvas is cost structures that we are going to focus on and pay more attention. Um, this is the section that refers to the total expenses that um, a business incurs in order to operate its business model and create value for its customers. Uh, it, it, it includes all costs associated with delivering the company's products or services, as well as any overhead or operating expenses. Um, so cost structures can be broken down into two categories, for example, fixed costs um, that remain constant regardless of the level of production or sales, such as rent, salaries, insurance, equipment, maintenance, and uh, variable costs um, that vary in proportions um, to the level of production or sales, such as raw materials and production labor, um, shipping costs, for example, and um, of course, business can also choose to have a cost structure that is either low or uh, high cost, depending on its strategic goals and target market. Um, for example, low um, strategy, a low cost structure uh, involves minimizing costs in order to offer products or services at a lower price than competitors. Um, in order, of course, to achieve a cost advantage. Um, and, for example, um, high cost structure involves focusing on uh, creating higher value uh, products or services with uh, premium uh, features or unique benefits and charging a premium price for them. Uh, this can also be achieved through investing in research or development branding, uh, creating hope for the customer experience, but um, uh, in detail uh, we are going to talk about this uh, part of business model canvas uh, later. Now let's move to the other element of business model. So firstly, we will pay attention to key resources. Uh, key resources are necessary. For example, tangible and intangible assets that the company needs to generate and deliver the right value to the customers. Resources are not only money, machines, or product materials, but also people or intellectual resources. Resources are the more valuable, the more unique or difficult to take over and distinguish us from the company. So here, the resources will include material resources, for example, machines, devices, warehouses, financial resources as money that we need to produce value for the customer, intellectual resources, for example, patents or copyrights, and human resources, that means I mean, human capital. Here come some guiding questions. What key resources do we need to offer our value proposition? What resources are needed 
or the proper functioning of the distribution channels? What resources do our customer relationships require? The next step and the another element of the business model are key activities uh, which ensure the proper functioning of the business model. The activities differ depending on the profile of the company. For some companies, such activity will be the production itself and production or delivery of goods. For others, solving social or environmental problems will be the key activity. Here, key activity uh, are those activities that the enterprise must undertake to deliver the value to customers, to establish relationships with them, and generate a revenue structure. Here comes some questions. What actions do we need to take to deliver our value proposition to our client? What actions do our channels of reaching the client and their relationships with them require. Here comes another part of the business model, which are key partners. Here in this area, we could identify all the partners of the enterprise on which its operations depend. We could also indicate what benefits we get from partnership with other organizations. Because the success of the company also depends on the key partner in the form of associates, suppliers, contractors, whose services or products are necessary to operate and offer customers their own value proposition. So we need to answer the question like, who is our key partner? What external companies or organization do we need to operate? What are the key activities our partners carry out? And now we move to the cost structure, uh, which in business model can be either cost oriented or value oriented. In the first case, which means cost oriented structure, companies will strive to reduce costs wherever it is possible. On the other hand, when companies implement business model with a value based cost structure, they focus more on providing customers with value at the appropriate level. So creating a value proposition and delivering it to customers, maintaining appropriate relationship with them, maintaining internal resources, taking all the actions that are necessary for the proper functioning of the model generated. And then it it just uh, generates expenses. So here we come to the uh, almost last element of the template, which is the cost structure. Here are some questions that are helpful. What activities of the company require the greatest financial outlays? What generates the greatest cost? Which key uh, resources cost the most? Now let's move to the example of multi-voltage, which is a great example of a regenerative business model. So now let's focus on the example of multi-voltage 
a regenerative business model. Uh, Multivoti is a, a restaurant and a co-working and meeting space that was founded in 2014 by a group of young neighborhood friends with different cultural backgrounds. So they were coming from eight different countries. Multivoti is the example of how work can be designed to offer dignity, citizenship, and simultaneously create both business and community value. Multivolti is a restaurant and a co-working space. The purpose of the business is a circular economic system where profit and non-profit support each other. Yeah, that's right, Multivolti is both for profit and non-profit organization, a kind of hybrid business model that can categorize as a regenerative business. So Multivolti, as we said previously, is both a restaurant and a co-working and meeting space for its community partners, a range of non-profit organizations which are part of the neighborhood and can create value for community residents. The beneficiaries are the organizations and the people they serve. Multivolti functions as a for-profit and non-profit at the same time. So its purpose is to create a community-based dining experience, a hub for social integration and employment, which serves the needs of community beyond food and nourishment. It does this through the community partners who are an integral part of the space. Multivolti has created a space for the many voices and leaves it touches daily. Multivolti is an integral part of community. Along with its partners, it's building the future by heeding the voices of the neighborhood and engaging in a continuous dialogue. Every month, it adds something to the meaning of community, an event, connections, and even launching new organizations. So it also helped incubate new businesses and organizations by providing advice and support. So as we said, uh, the example of multivolti is the example of great regenerative business model. And next we will move to the section that shows the process of um, creating regenerative business model. So what is unique about the regenerative business model? So the uniqueness um, focuses on the idea that the community value creation is as important as business value creation. Uh, the process is based on a continuous dialogue between the community, followed by an integration of proposed, which in turn leads to community regeneration. Thus, a regenerative business is in the business of building local trust. A regenerative business is space-based, builds community wealth, improves social cohesion and inclusivity, creating a just future for the community. It's focused on supporting the community's job to be done. A regenerative business model creates value for the community itself. Uh, it has two recipients of value, the customer and the beneficiary. It uses it to profit to create more value for the community it serves. It proposes not profit mark making, but community regeneration. So its strength is the creation of big community relationship, which make it more resilient in times of crisis. So the trust is just the current. Okay. 
there is the example of um, regenerative business model um, that is fulfilled with the information about the multivolty. And as we can see, um, the multivolty business model canvas uh, gives us information about social entrepreneurship. Uh, which is a kind of organization that seeks to solve social or environmental problem by using business as a tool for change. Social enterprise is on one way profit and on the other hand is non-profit. The community businesses and cooperatives, they are impact businesses, social ventures, as well as more mainstream businesses that have a social impact as a core purpose. They are effective because they are trying to solve a social problem as well as to gain money. So if the organization is not regenerative, the chances of failure are exponentially higher. So what is uh, regenerative business? Regenerative marketing is defined as marketing practices which attract communities and build local prosperity over a long time. The outcomes of regenerative marketing include value creation for customers, employees, as, as we can see, local communities. So, by the definition, Regenerative marketing practices must build community wealth. So, as we can see, the same applies to regenerative business, where the uniqueness is about regenerative business model. Uh, that is just the idea, um, which means that it creates a community value the same way as it creates business value. So thank you for your attention and remember that nothing is 